let's say that I've just won some type of contest at a car dealership, and they're going to give me a brand new car. And in deciding which car they give me, they're first going to randomly select the engine type. So the engine will come in two different varieties. It'll either be a four-cylinder, four-cylinder engine, or a six-cylinder engine. And they're literally just going to fl flip a fair coin to decide whether I get a four-cylinder engine or a six-cylinder engine. Then they're going to pick the color. And there's four different colors that the cars come in. So I'll write color in a neutral color. So you could get a red car. That's not red. Let me do that in an actual red color, closer to red. You could get a red car. You could get a blue car. Blue car. You could get a green car. You could get a green car. Or you could get a white car or you could get a white car. And once again, they're going to randomly, let's say, just pick, they're going to have red, blue, green, and white in little slips of paper in a bowl, and they're just going to pick one of them out. So all of these are equally likely. So given this, that they're just going to flip a coin to pick the engine, and they're also going to, that all of these, the color is all equally likely, I want to think about the probability of getting a six-cylinder white car. The probability of getting a six-cylinder white car. So I encourage you to pause the video and think about it on your own. Well, one way to think about this is, well, what are all of the equally likely possible outcomes? And then which of those match six-cylinder white car? Well, first we could think about the engine decision. We're either going to get a four-cylinder engine. So the first decision is the engine. You could view it that way. You're going to get a four-cylinder engine, or you're going to get a six-cylinder engine. Now, if you got a four-cylinder engine, you're either going to get Red, blue, blue, green, green, or white, or white. And if you've got a six cylinder engine, once again, you're either going to get red, blue, I think you see where this is going, that's not blue, red, blue, blue, green, green or white or white so how many possible outcomes are there well you could just count the you could kind of say the leaves of this tree diagram 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 possible outcomes and that makes sense you have two possible engines times four possible colors 2 times 4 and you see that right here one group of four two groups of four so this outcome right here is a four cylinder blue car and this outcome over here is a six-cylinder green car. So there's eight equally possible outcomes. And which outcome matches the one that we, I guess, are hoping for, the white six-cylinder car? Well, that's this one right over here. It's one of eight equally likely events. So we have a one-eighth probability. Now, this wasn't the only way that we could have drawn the T diagram. We could have thought about color as the first row of this tree. So we could have said, look, we're either going to get a, let me do it down here so I have a little more space. We're either going to get a red, a blue, a, that's not blue, changing colors is the hard part, a blue, a green, man, a green, make it, a green or a white car, or a white car. And then for each of those colors, I'm either going to get a four cylinder or a six cylinder engine. So it's either going to be four or a six, either going to be four or a six, either going to be four or a six, either going to be four or a six. This would be another way of, of drawing a, tea dry, a, tea, a tree diagram to represent all of the outcomes. So what is this outcome right over here? This is a six-cylinder red car. This is a four-cylinder blue car right over here, which is the one that we care about, a white six-cylinder car. That's this outcome right over here. And once again, you see you have eight equally likely outcomes. And that happens because you have four possible colors. And then for each of those four possible colors, you have two different engine types.